All right, so today we're going to talk about how a rock can become a sediment. So take a rock like this one. How do we get it to be a powder like this, which is what we would call sediment? It's broken up pieces of rock. Well, step one is going to be weathering. So we need to break the rock into pieces. And there are two types of weathering. You've got physical weathering and chemical weathering. So let's go ahead and take a look at physical. So with physical weathering, there's no change chemically to what the rock is doing. So my first example of physical weathering is called frost wedging. And the name suggests it has something to do with cold, and it's definitely true. And we've probably seen a lot of this with our recent cold days we've had here in Culpeper. So if we take a rock like this one, this is a little bit of siltstone, we can put it in a cup of water, so I'm placing it in my cup of water. Now if I take this and I put it in the freezer and freeze it overnight, What's going to happen is right now the siltstone is filling with water. So the little pore spaces, if I were to take it out and look at it, it looks wet, but not only is it wet on the outside, it's wet on the inside. The space in between each of the sediments that form siltstone now contain water. So now when I put it in the freezer, what's going to happen to that water in between the sediments? Well, if you said that water's going to expand, you're definitely right. So I've already gone ahead with this experiment, and I put one over, put one of our other siltstone pieces in the freezer overnight. And now we have a cup full of different pieces of siltstone. So if I dump this out, now we have several pieces of siltstone. What happened would be that the rock had was full of water, that water expands when it freezes, and it breaks the rock into several little pieces or sediments. And those sediments are would be would become what makes up our soil, um, and it's going to make up pretty much all the dirt and different pieces of sediments you would find around. And they're not all the same rock, but this happens in lots of different rocks. So that's frost wedging. It goes into the water, the water absorbs it into the pore space, it freezes and expands, cracks it up into little pieces. And that frost wedging is also not only responsible for rocks weathering, but also sidewalks and potholes in the wintertime. We get all of that water in there, and then overnight it gets colder, it freezes, and it's going to expand and break up the road. So that's frost wedging. Now the second type that we want to focus on is called exfoliation. So I have a nice little picture here. Well, not picture. It's an actual rock. It's a picture, or rock, rather, shale. And shale it has many, many, many layers. And if you look at the layers from the side, um, you can see them, and it looks like they could peel apart. Now nature, when it wants to peel a rock apart, it's going to put pressure on the outside of the rock and it'll break the rock and snap it in half and it peels off each layer at a time. That's exfoliation, removing one layer at a time from pressure being put on the two opposite ends of the rock. So exfoliation, just like you would exfoliate your face, you rub something you know abrasive on your face, it's going to actually do the same thing to a rock, only now we're not rubbing the rock, we're peeling off those outer layers just like you would peel off outer layers of skin with an exfoliating treatment. So rocks also get facials, basically. Um, so that's exfoliation. And then the last one that we really want to focus in on is called biological weathering. So that means things like trees, with their roots, the roots grow into the rock. So if they were to grow into this rock, they would grow right up. As the tree gets bigger, it gets stronger, and it would break the rock into pieces. So if we broke it into pieces, that's weathering. We didn't change its chemical composition, so that's definitely a physical weathering. So that would be biological. And then the second way that's biological would be burrowing. Any animal that digs in the ground is going to dig at rocks, and eventually it can actually break up the rocks into smaller pieces, uh, thereby weathering them with physical weathering in a biological nature. Um, I know my dog does this a lot in my yard. He, he will bury things, then he digs them all up, and he breaks up the rocks and mixes up my soil. So that would be another physical weathering. So we did physical. Now we need to go over to chemical weathering. So chemical weathering, how is it different than physical? Well, it's going to actually react with something. So something's going to change chemically in our actual weathering process. The first type of chemical weathering to know would be oxidation or rusting. And rocks rust. If you look at this rock closely, you can see it's starting to, it's starting to have some redness to it. That's because there's iron in this rock um, that's being produced from a reaction with oxygen in the air. And you get iron oxide or rust. And that's oxidation. The next one is called hydrolysis. And as the hydro at the beginning of the word suggests, Hydrolysis is a reaction with water. And then you have dissolving. If you take a rock and it dissolves into the water and actually breaks into its ionic components, meaning it's completely dissolved, that's when you would have a dissolving of a rock. 
Um, and then lastly, you have acid rain. Now, acid rain um, is when you have something that's slightly acidic, which means its pH is lower than 7, and it's going to react with rocks. And if you remember from minerals, one particular ro rock that reacts is called calcite. So if you have a sample of calcite, you can actually react it with acid. So if I took acid, like hydrochloric acid here, and dropped it on a sample of calcite, like the one here, what happens is it's going to produce a bubbling. Um, I would do this, except it doesn't really show up on camera very well. I can try it if we want. Um, so if I take my calcite sample, and I take my acid, and I drop it carefully onto the rock, it actually, over time, will start to dissolve the rock away. And you can see a little bit of bubbling. I don't really think it shows up. You can almost hear it. So if you hear that fizzy noise, that's the reaction. That acid's dissolving away at our calcite. Uh, and that reaction would happen if the rainwater was slightly acidic. It doesn't have to be hydrochloric acid. It can be you know, any acid dissolved into the water or part of the water solution. And it would dissolve away and chip away at our, our, at our calcite. Which calcite is also found in limestone, the sedimentary rock, as well as marble, the metamorphic rock. So that's an example of another way that we could chemically weather a rock. We're going to break it into pieces. We're going to break away at the rock with things like acid. Well, now that we've broken up the rocks, now we, got, we have to take those pieces of rock and move them. So there are four main agents of erosion. So we've got wind, water, ice, and biological erosion. So wind erosion, as you might suspect, is just the simple blowing of a sediment or pieces of, of material across the surface. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you. I'm taking, my, I'm taking wind from my breath, I'm blowing across the sediment, and now I'm having, it's experiencing